Hello again and welcome back to Illegally Cited. This is Jesse and I am back for another game accessibility and first impressions, uh, accessibility first impressions video. And this time I'm going to be talking about God of War Ragnarok for the PlayStation 5. Um, there will be no gameplay footage for this game. I just kind of have the PlayStation Store up here uh, on my the PlayStation Store website uh, for God of War Ragnarok here. Um, due to the embargoes, we uh, I can't have any gameplay footage, but we can talk about it. So... I want to give my first impressions of God of War Ragnarok for the PS5. And before we go any further, I just want to let you know that I have been provided a review copy by PlayStation uh, for my honest coverage, my honest thoughts and review of the game. Uh, the full game will be out on November 9th, and I will be able to uh, provide actual gameplay footage and uh, an actual more detailed review and deep dive into the accessibility settings of the release version around that time. So, uh, without any further delay, let's chat a little bit about God of War Ragnarok. I've played a few hours into the game so far, and it's been pretty cool. So, first thing people are going to want to know is, you know, there's been some talk on Twitter, uh, there's already been some announcements that, yes, God of War Ragnarok is going to have some accessibility features, and I can confirm that, in fact, they do. Uh, one of the best surprises is that when you start the game, the first thing it comes up with, it tells you, um, it prompts you if you want the screen reader access. I believe it says, oh, I believe, what, what was it, like, hit, it was either square or circle um, to enable screen reader access. And then from there, um, it had several settings that you could adjust ahead of time. So you could explore a lot of the accessibility settings, set your subtitles, uh, set your brightness, but just a lot of other accessibility settings as well. And there are a lot here. Um, so that was a very good onboarding process. So even somebody with uh, low vision or who is totally blind uh, will be able to access uh, with uh, text-to-speech narration right when they get in the game. So yes, there is text-to-speech narration for the menus, and it was pretty responsive. Um, you know, just I probably spent the first at least 20 minutes just going through every menu, you know, graphics, sound gameplay accessibility and there were options that were kind of duplicated in a couple places just to make sure people didn't miss them but there's like a lot of volume sliders there's control options there's a high contrast mode kind of similar to um other sony titles uh like the last of us or spider-man uh, but this one is really cool because you could also change the like individual colors of like oh i want my enemy maybe or i want my enemy to be a different color than red maybe i'm red blue colorblind or red green colorblind or whatever um but you could change that and you could you know whether you wanted the regular background of the game or you wanted um a different background for the high contrast and what i really liked was that they had for the touchpad um you can tap different parts of the touchpad to access like your map and your um, your character sheet. We'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but the swipe gestures, you know, think about The Last of Us 2 where, you know, on The Last of Us you'd swipe left for high contrast if that was enabled. Swiping up would give you the character information, etc. Um, you could define what the swipes did so all of the swipes in all four directions were currently undefined and then they gave you a whole list of things um pre-assigned things that you could assign to that direction so i said you know what let's go for consistency and i enabled the high contrast and i set it to uh flick left and it worked great um so that was cool like i said there is text-to-speech narration um, they had its own volume. I can't remember if it had um, a narration speed. I can't remember that right off the top of my head. 
But the voice was clear. Like I said, it seemed pretty responsive, so I didn't really have a problem with that. Um, that was really nice because, again, you know, one of the areas where I struggle uh, is reading, you know, reading a lot of text. And just to be able to have that um, narrated was really, really helpful. Um, they even, they did also have um, separate text size options for subtitles and UI text. So for like menus, I believe they had like, you know, standard, large, and even extra large. So, you know, it wasn't like a full percentage slider, but, you know, it, it, it had uh, larger text options. And the background, uh, I like the fact that the menus were a dark background, light text. I, you know, I prefer a dark theme, so I was pretty happy about that. Um, you know, a lot of people are also going to, I know that are going to be covering this game, are going to be cover, covering it from a uh, totally blind perspective, which is awesome. Uh, I was thinking about this, and I was kind of looking at it from both a blind and low vision perspective. So if you do have some usable vision, they do have lots of nice low vision uh, features, uh, at least in the, the current review build that I have right now. Um, they had some HUD size options so you could make the HUD a little bit bigger. Um, they had subtitle options so you could make the subtitles um, larger and have backgrounds and just customize various aspects of that. So all that was really good. Um, so when you get into the game itself, before you play the game, um, there's a couple things that I would highly recommend. Um, there is a audio glossary because the uh, God of War Ragnarok uses audio cues kind of similar to how The Last of Us 1 and 2 did. As a matter of fact, if you've played any of those games or if you've watched any of my videos for those games, uh, you'll notice that a few sound effects have been shared across development studios there at Sony. And... Um, they have some of the same sounds, like the interaction sound. I'm like, oh, I, I know that sound. Um, so they use some of those. But, you know, God of War is more of a melee-based game versus, you know, guns and ranged combat. So there are a lot of new sounds. And you definitely want to go through <laughs> and really listen to some of those sounds. Um to know what to know what they are because things for like you know needing to be able to block or dodge or counter those types of things those are going to be regular gameplay mechanics and some of them are also used in quick time events which they throw you into right away in the game like there's this like one of the literally the one of the first things that you do was a quick time event which i failed at least once or twice um because I wasn't sure what button to press. So the other thing before you start playing that I would highly recommend that you do is they have a controller mapping uh, button list. So you can I, you can remap them, but you can also view the controller mapping. And the text-to-speech will read off what all of the controls are. Um, and this was really handy because, you know, like it uses almost pretty much all the buttons on the controller and you're going to want to know how to, you know, light attack, heavy attack, block, dodge. Um, and then you kind of, you, you, you correspond that with your audio cue and you're going to want to know those together. Like what is the block sound? What is the attack sound? Whatever. Because in the early build, the review build that I played, um, it gives you the audio cue, and when it, the nice thing is it does read some of the tutorials aloud, but it doesn't tell you, like, hit square, hit right bumper, hit left trigger, whatever. It'll, you know, it says, press the block button, press the light attack button, press the special ability button. I'm like, um, what button is that? <laughs> So, like one of the, like I said, the first quick time event that I had, um, I think it was like I had to, I had to 
switch between like left and right bumper and uh, I didn't know that and I actually had to kind of look at the screen because I didn't know what the audio cues were or I didn't remember what the audio cues were for those so I kind of wish that the um that the tutorials would actually tell you what button to press instead of like, I mean, I get it because if you remap the controls, which you can do, um, you know, if it just says press triangle, well, you change that to triangle, you would have to know like, oh, you switched it to circle or whatever. Um, but just saying press the block button, um, there's a little bit of a gap as far as like, you got to do a little prep work um, before you can fully... Um, figure things out. I mean, that being said, it really didn't take all that long to figure out. Once I heard the sound effects a couple times, once I, you know, once I actually got some gameplay going and not just quick time events, you know, like, oh, this is my light attack. This is my heavy attack. Okay, there's my block. Um, then it kind of, especially in context, it, it, it made it easier for me to know, like, what I had to do. Um, so once you get out of the quick time event, the gameplay itself was actually really quite fun. Um, the initial, you know, again, I just played The Last of Us Part 1 recently, and Triangle was the use button. And just instinctively, like, I heard I heard the Last of Us sound effect, which is also what kind of triggered it. But, like, hearing that, oh, hit the interact button, and I would hit Triangle, I was like, oh, no, that's actually Circle in this game. And I actually tried... I actually did remap it temporarily so that I made triangle the interact button and then circle the, um, I believe that was like the special skill button. I forget what it's exactly called, but, um, yeah, it, you know, I, I switched it to that, but then I'm like, and eh, you know, in this game, it actually feels better to have the interact, um, the way it was originally, just because like you're, your special ability kind of ties to your weapon, and it's it's just right up there by your attack button, so it kind of makes sense logically. Um, but there was a little bit of a um, there was a little bit of a not a learning curve, but I'm like like I said, I was just triggered by hearing that Last of Us audio cue. I'm like, I should hit triangle. No, you shouldn't. You should hit this other button. Um, but it was really cool. Like I said, I, I love the audio cues. Um, I love the, it does have some navigation assists and it's not, it doesn't seem to be waypoint based like the last of us does. It kind of just goes in the direction. Like, you know, in the last of us, you'd hear like a low tone and then a higher tone um, based on where the next waypoint was. And, you know, based on how far those tones were apart you knew how close or far away you were to your objective. Um, you really just get one tone uh, in God of War Ragnarok, at least so far, and then you're just pointed in that direction, um, which still does seem to work. Um, there was a little bit of jank where, like, trying to, you'd kind of run into a rock or a tree. Um, but generally, I found it to be quite useful. I mean, especially with low vision. Um, you know, I could be like, oh, well, I can just, you know, sidestep around this tree, um, that's, that's in front of me. But like I said, is as detailed as the graphics are in these environments, having that navigation assist can be really, really helpful. Um, because the more realistic and, you know, and detailed these environments are, you know, it's easy for me to overlook something or miss something. So, you know, or get lost, like, where or am I supposed to go to that ledge or can I make that jump or, you know, whatever it happens to be. Um, so the navigation assist is, you know, even in, in, even though it's slightly different than The Last of Us, <clears throat> um, it is sort of similar and it generally worked quite well. Like I really, in the, in the time that I've played, I didn't have any problem navigating, um, to where I was supposed to go. Now, that being said, you have a lot of other audio cues for environmental sounds like health and armor or health and 
and other different power-ups that you can get or collectibles that you can get. Um, and you may want to play with the audio, um, the audio balancing and volumes and stuff, because, you know, when you have a lot of things happening and you have maybe some music in the background, especially if you're totally blind and you're exclusively relying on your hearing, um, some of those sounds can be a little bit subtle. Um, they do have nice little visual markers. Though there's like little, almost like little glowy like stems coming out of the ground, so you can kind of see where they are. But they don't have the pinging system, where you know, like in The Last of Us, I could ping for an enemy or I could ping for an object. You kind of just have to like wander around the environment and listen for those audio sounds around you. And then you can go pick them up. Now, there are options to automatically pick those up. And one thing I like that God of War Ragnarok is doing is that they are, they have a few different settings where you have kind of like a assist and a, an assist mode plus. So like if you want just a little bit of assistance um, or you want like a full type of assistance mode, you can. And one of those is like when you uh, automatically pick up items, like you can have it do just the, okay, I want to pick up health and critical items. Or you can say, do the full shebang and have it, you know, anything that you basically, that isn't nailed down that you can pick up, go ahead and pick it up. Um, so I like the fact that you're given those different types of assists in addition to your different difficulty modes. So you have difficulty modes, you have a lot of gameplay assists. Um, so there's a lot there. Um, I'm just kind of flying off the top of my head. This is meant to be a first impressions video. Like I said, no gameplay. Um, I right around launch time, I will likely do you know uh, like a full deep dive where I go in and like we'll walk through the menus. I'll show you a little bit of gameplay, highlight what is there, what isn't, um, and we'll go from there. But um, my first impressions are generally very strong like i said i you know the story so far i'm not going to spoil anything in this video um but this the uh story has been rather intriguing so far some stuff happens pretty early on the game on in the game that kicks things off pretty well and i'm definitely curious to see where the story is going to go uh the gameplay is fun like i said i've done some combat i've done a couple of puzzles um there's been well quite a bit of combat um, but you know, the God of War 2018, I really like the style that they had in that game where pretty much the entire game had this whole, like follow, it, it was like a single camera shot throughout the whole game that would pan between Kratos and Atreus. And, um, this seems to be taken like a similar thing. I mean, the presentation style and like just the graphic quality, the voice acting, the music, the presentation is just fantastic uh and i would expect nothing less um having played the first game um in this uh, god of war revival uh, but you know and i did play with uh, my 3d headphones my sony headset so again the sound was really well done um really the one of the last things i want to talk about as far as accessibility goes in my initial impressions here I've been very positive so far, but I had one major bummer. There were two things that I really noticed that were a little bit confusing. I'll start with the the little minor one. There were, like I said, there were quick time events in the game, and I already talked about, you know, there where you they say press the guard button or press the light attack button. They didn't tell you to press the button, but there was another type of um, kind of a quick time event, but like you would use your one of your weapons to um you know to interact with items in the environment to solve slight puzzles like like um like pulling a pillar off to the side or something to clear a path and you would get a sound um but it wouldn't tell you like if you were totally blind or even if you were low vision and you weren't looking at the icon closely enough uh, you know, I'm thinking about games like As Dusk Falls, where, like, it would tell you, oh, you know, don't just 
flick the analog stick, flick it left or flick it right or rotate it left, rotate it right. Um, the example that I can think of, there was, like I said, there was a part where I had to like kind of fling this little rock pillar thing. Um, I think it was like off to the right side. Uh, and then I had to fling it back to the left once I got across. Um, but it, you know, it had the sound, but it didn't tell you what direction that you were supposed to flick it. And visually there was like a little analog stick icon with a, like a little arrow pointing to the right. So I don't know if the text to speech could say flick right or, you know, flick left or, or you know, even just left or right. I mean, you can, you can figure it out um, contextually, but I can see that being a little bit confusing, especially if you didn't have any usable vision and you weren't quite sure what you were supposed to do. Um, but the, unfortunately, like I said, there's text to speech in the review build that I have and the menus read great. Um, a lot of the tutorials actually read, they read great. Even when you go into, let's say, you know, you, you hit the touchpad to go into your character sheet or whatever, it reads those tutorials fairly well. But my, honestly, my, my biggest accessibility disappointment so far is that while it reads the tutorials, <laughs> not when you're in the game itself, none of the character and pause menu, essentially, none of those screens read with text to speech. So early on, like, oh, you need to equip this weapon or you need to equip this armor, you need to equip this, um, augment you know you can augment and up kind of you know slot these little gems or whatever into your weapons or armor um it read the tutorials for that but it did not read it did not read any of those actual menus um the skill trees it said hey you can upgrade your character go look at these skill trees and it read the tutorials but it did not read the skill trees and that makes me very 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 sad because honestly as far as text to speech goes, those are the those are the critical things that I would want a game like this to speak. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to the game accessibility conference next week, and I was sending a link to somebody who was asking about it, and I ended up just like watching part of um, my session that we did in 2019 because I, like I said, somebody had asked me for that link. And I was watching a few minutes of it, and one of the things that I even stressed then was like, all these games are getting skill trees and inventories and all these upgrade screens and, and all that. I'm like, I can't wait until they have text-to-speech in them. And we've had several games, like a lot of the Ubisoft games, a lot of the, um, a lot of the, um, you know, like The Last of Us 1 and 2. I'm hoping that this will be fixed, or that, it, because the, the text-to-speech is there. And where it does read, it reads very well. Like I said, the menus, even some of the tutorials, uh, when things are happening during gameplay, like sometimes it'll read like little tutorial things that come up. And that's great. Um, so, the, you know, they already have the framework there. Um, but I'm hoping that, you know, they, they did say, you know, during the embargo, um, they said that there will be... Um, like a day one patch that is supposed to address some accessibility issues and just, you know, other things, uh, other gameplay and, you know, bug fixes and things like that. So I don't know what those are going to be, but I'm holding out for, I'm, I'm hoping, I'm really, really hoping that if they fix any major accessibility thing for launch, pretty please, pretty please. I really, really hope that they can add narration. You know, even like, I, I know the maps are a little bit more difficult. <clears throat> um, but like, especially just like the vertical menus or like the skill trees, like you can arrow between them. And then another nice thing that they did is you can move by cursor or move by D-pad. You have that option. And I set mine to D-pad. So it's more of a snap movement through the menu system. That's excellent. 
So that framework is already there. It just needs to speak. Um, so I really, really hope that they do add text to speech support for those in game character menus, skill trees, inventory, weapons, quests. None of those speak right now. And that's a huge bummer. Um, you know, like if I, you know, if I wanted to, yes, I can magnify it or I can struggle around it. Um, but as good as like the, the combat and the navigation and the menu text to speech is a blind player is not going to be able to independently do that. So we're so close. I think if they can nail the text to speech for those character menus and screens, the, the quests, the skill trees, the weapons, the map, if they can add, if they can add, um, and fix the narration for those things, um, it's going to be pretty close to the last of us. It's going to be definitely different. Um, but it's, it's going to be pretty close. So I'm going to reserve, you know, my final review thoughts, uh, for after game launch, when we have the final launch, uh, updates and everything, but my initial impressions, like I said, I've played a few hours of this. I'm going to continue playing it and I'm going to wait for any updates around launch day. And, uh, yeah, I mean, overall, my impressions are very positive so far. Um, just, um, like I said, if, if they could just fix that text to speech stuff that admittedly was, like I said, I was all excited. We had text to speech everywhere. And then I hit that, I hit that touchpad going and, and, uh, look at stuff from my character and just went, Oh no, it doesn't speak. Um, so if they can fix that, we're going to be in good shape. And even if, you know, unfortunately, even if they don't for launch, I would say this is something that they could fix after launch. You know, they could continue to work on it. They continue. To, they could continue to patch it. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm hoping that they do because they have a hell of a nice start so far. That is my impressions of God of War Ragnarok for the PlayStation 5. I will have some gameplay footage and my final full review at or around launch, November 9th. Um, and uh, I will cover the game again then, and you'll be able to see some actual gameplay. Hope this video was helpful for you, and especially if you were considering whether this game would be accessible to you or not, stay tuned, and I will let you know again around launch. And again, thank you to Sony. Thank you to PlayStation for providing a review code um, for me to check out the game uh, a little bit early and provide this accessibility information to you. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a like if you did. Follow me on Twitter at BGFH79, twitch.tv slash illegally cited, illegally cited.com, and right here on YouTube. Until next time, I will chat with everybody again later.